So, it's springtime, everyone's chilling outside, I get it. But what about the gigantic 3D print that you got running in the basement? Did you check the amount of filament on the spool before you started it? This wouldn't have happened with a filament sensor and we're going to build one for the Endo3 V2 today for just 99 cents. My name is Daniel, welcome to the Crossing Channel, the place where we're talking about 3D printing, 3D scanning and 3D design. So what is a filament sensor? In the very simple form, it's just a switch that gets pressed by filament running over the trigger and when the filament runs out, the switch releases and so tells the printer that filament has just run out. The sensor that we're using today is a 60 cent lever switch combined with some accessories coming under $1 for the whole thing. So let's go through all the required parts so you know exactly what you need. I've also put links down in the description of this video where you can buy all the stuff. Starting with the filament sensor housing, you can download the STL file from Thingiverse using the link in the description. This sensor will fit on any end of free version. Of course, your mainboard needs to have a filament sensor port. It also acts as a filament guide, so filament will not scratch against the extruder inlet anymore and it's less likely to break. This bracket is holding the switch in place which is going to be inserted here at the bottom and this little locking piece is going to hold the switch in place. Then we have a 608 bearing that's going to be inserted from the top holding the filament down pressing it against the lever switch. Here we have the little lever switch. Next we have a three pin JST block with two crimp connectors. About 60 to 80 centimeters of two wire cable. One side is going to be soldered to the switch and the other one is going to be crimped to the connectors. The soldered ends are going to be protected by this shrink tube. And finally, the sensor will be fixed to the printer frame using a zip tie. Now let's start building this. I'm removing the insulation on both sides of the wire. On the side that's been soldered to the switch, I'm removing a bit more of the insulation. Before soldering the cables, don't forget to put the shrink tubes over the cable ends because you cannot do that later. I can't tell you how many times I've actually forgotten that. So the next step, soldering these cables to the lever switch. I am using the outer two connectors. I need the switch to be in an open state when it's pressed down and closed state when it's released. Highly recommend to check this using a voltmeter before you do the soldering so you know that the switch is working and you have the right pins connected. After that, push the string tubes over the soldered ends and heat them up with a heat gun. If you don't have one, a lighter will also do the job. Next, the other ends get crimped to the little connectors. This is actually a really tedious thing. It's very fiddly. There is crimping tools for that, but I think it's a little bit of an overkill if you only do this once a year. So I'm done crimping here. Let's carefully insert the connectors into the plug. So if we do this correctly, we should have our connectors inserted like shown in the picture. Cables coming down from the top and you should look at the side where you can see the connector pins in the plug. So the first connector is inserted in the left slot. The second one is in the middle slot. So the cabling is done. Let's continue with the sensor housing. Here we insert the bearing into its slot. This might take a little more force, but don't worry. It fits in perfectly. And in the end, when it's clicked in place, it should turn freely. Now we insert the lever switch from the bottom of the part so it slides into its final place. And then we can secure the switch with the little plastic slider that holds it in place. Now it's time to install this on the printer. To install the sensor on the printer, First, remove any filament that might be loaded from the system. Next, the sensor bracket is being mounted on the metal part that holds one of the rollers of the Z-axis. That part is left to the extruder motor inlet. Insert the zip tie from the top into the little slot of the sensor bracket. Slide the sensor over the frame while making a little loop with the zip tie around the counterpart of the frame that holds the roller wheel. Tighten the zip tie so the sensor is staying in its place. After opening the electronics case by removing the top screw and the three bottom screws, identify your mainboard version. It might be 422 or 427. We need this later for the right firmware selection. Next, remove the two front screws from the printer frame that hold the electronics box in place. Slide the sensor cable in from the top and bring it down into the corner so it will exit the case in the same spot as the motor and BL touch cables. Then remount the case to the frame with the two screws 
you just removed. Now, identify the filament sensor connector on the mainboard. It is next to the green terminals that connect power to the hot end. Take the filament sensor cable and plug it into the connector on the mainboard by gently pressing it into its place. Now we can close the electronics case. Next step is to install a firmware that supports the filament sensor, because this is the Ender 3 V2 and it has the new display which isn't fully supported by the official version of modern firmware, I'm using a modified firmware by Gyres on GitHub, which has heavily improved menu support for the V2 display. In the releases section of the GitHub page, which I've also linked in the description, you will find all kinds of version of the firmware for different setups. First part of the selection is to identify which mainboard version you have. So currently that's either 422 or 427, and then you'll have to pick, depending if you have a touch sensor or not, one of the corresponding files. I have the 427 mainboard installed on this printer, so this will be my mainboard selection. Because I have the touch installed on my printer, I would probably select E3v2 touch. 3x3HS427 bin, which is a high speed probing version. I will go more in depth about this special firmware in another video that I link up here in the corner as soon as possible. So let's download the appropriate firmware file and copy it to the SD card. The SD card will be inserted into the printer, then we turn off the printer and turn it back on. The firmware will get installed. We can now get into the control menu and in the advanced section go down towards the end where you will now find the filament sensor switch. Tap the button once to activate the sensor. You should also set something for the unload and load length. That is how much the filament has to travel from the extruder motor to the hot end. For the Ender 3 v 2 that's about 42 centimeters. So this corresponds to a loading length of 420 millimeters. The unload length you can set a little bit higher to 500 for example. Go up one level in the menu and store your settings now. The next thing to remember, because this is a new firmware, any previous settings you might have, like the Z offset for a BL touch, for example, are going to be lost and you will have to go to do the Z offset calibration again. I think we can do a test print now and see if the filament sensor is actually working as expected. In the middle of the print, I'm going to cut the filament and see what's happening. The printer is stopping the print after the filament runout is detected and the nozzle goes into the park position. Printer will unload the remaining filament and we have to pull the rest out once it's done. Then we can insert new filament again and confirm through the menu that we did finish doing that so the printer will load the new filament in. Make sure you remove the filament from the nozzle once it starts oozing out the new filament. Otherwise, this is going to cause troubles when it's moving back to continue the print. And now we can leave it Time to go relaxing again. That has been my guide how to build and install a filament sensor on the Ender 3 v2. If you have more specific questions, especially about the Gyres firmware, please ask them in the comment section or on our Discord channel that we linked in the description. I will also follow up soon with a detailed explanation video of that specific firmware and how to use all the new functions here on this channel. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like one of the other two I've linked up here for you. And I see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.